One of the, one of the things you have to understand, too, is, is that everybody conducted opera back then, and everybody conducted Wagner back then. I mean, again, going back to Toscanini, um, the, the, the single conductor he conducted most in his entire career was Wagner, and not, not Verdi. He conducted more Wagner than Verdi, and more Wagner even than Beethoven. And um, Victor de Sabata, another great Italian conductor, his favorite composer to conduct was, was Wagner. And um, I mean, they had perhaps a different way of, of, of looking at it. Puccini's favorite composer was Wagner. I mean, this very strong Wagnerian. Uh, oh, yes. Um, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, he said, after you have heard Tristan, all other composers are mandolinists yes, in comparison right. to Wagner. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And, and, he and, said it's, in, it's, it, you, it's impossible to imitate. And, him. Yes, and Verdi it said, just into, yeah. Yeah. Verdi said, it's another great quote, Verdi said in a letter, recently published letter to Ricordi, um, in about late, in the, in the 1890s, he said that the second act of Tristan, he'd been studying the score of Tristan, and he said, the second act of Tristan is the most perfect in the history of opera and the most intoxicating music ever written. Um, this is from Verdi. That was an achievement <laughs> from what? Verdi. Yeah. Yeah. That was an achievement for, for, yeah, for, for that Verdi, phrase. Does, for Verdi, Verdi, was, Verdi gave compliments to essentially no one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Beethoven, he gave some compliments. Be yep. Beethoven, he, yeah, but Beethoven was long dead too. I've always, I've always felt that, you know, there's a, there's a wonderful, a wonderful. He was nice to Bellini. Yeah. He didn't like Bellini. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. Bellini yeah. died in 1835 or 1836. Yeah. There's, there's a, uh, um, a, a wonderful sort of illustration of the fact that composers are, are typically much nicer to dead ones. Um, you know, Beethoven studied with Haydn. And he had a very difficult relationship with Haydn, and there were real problems. I mean, Beethoven had reason to feel that Haydn had shortchanged, and Beethoven had a very a fantastic scholarship to study with Haydn for five years. And um, Haydn went to London for two of those years, and instead of taking Beethoven with him, which Beethoven ex expected, and so did everyone else, he left him in Vienna to study with, with Salieri, actually, in Alprechtsberger. Beethoven was not happy. And, they, and Haydn called Beethoven our great mogul, sort of sort of making fun of his high and mighty airs, even though he was just a rube from the provinces. And, um, and Beethoven felt put upon by Haydn and, and would say, you know, ironic comments. Yet when Haydn died in 1809, Beethoven spent a lot of money to have a beautiful etching made of the birthplace, Haydn's birthplace in Hungary. And um, anytime anyone would visit Beethoven from then until the end of Beethoven's life, the first thing you had to do was Beethoven would take you to see this and it would say, just think in this little house such a great man was born. Mm -hmm. So see, once he was dead, then he was a great man. That's right. <laughs> so bad him, Bellini is the same. Yeah. <laughs> there are many followers of uh, Wagner. All the ones we have mentioned. Who do you think is the closest, the most uh, faithful follower of Wagner? Follower in what sense? It will be a modern, be it whatever. No, as a, con as, a condu as a conductor or as a... No, certainly not. No, neither one. No one. You know. Okay, I think the strongest influences of Wagner, um, the people who most, the strongest influences of Wagner were not composers. Um, I'm obviously, Richard Strauss and Mahler, less Mahler, and certainly. Um, Every, every, everybody else from Bizet to yeah. Puccini to um, Schoenberg, certainly Berg, they were all extremely influenced by Wagner. Leha, I mean, yes. Golden Silver Waltz has a wonderful Wagnerian. Well, well, well they all do. <laughs> and, and look, what could be more Wagnerian than, than Flickler to Nacht, the girl leader of, of Schoenberg? I mean, those are. Yes. Um, yeah. But, yeah. But, but at the same time, I think that probably the, 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 the artists most in, um, influenced by Wagner, most disciples of Wagner, were actually um, not musicians. I mean, Thomas Mann, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marcel Proust, August uh, Strindberg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. No, it's, it's uh, actually, you'll find that there are, you know, he had a tremendous impact upon playwriting. Um, Strindberg, yeah. uh, Metalink, maybe even Ibsen, in fact, did have some, uh, there was some influence sure. there. Um, and, and also a tremendous influence on, um, on the prose writing. Oh, I mean, that's, um, I mean, Thomas I mean, Mann and Proust, yeah, yeah, um, also D.H. Yeah, Lawrence. Uh, D.H. Uh, uh, Lawrence and James Joyce. James Joyce, you know, the I whole mean, structural a, idea of truth. Yeah, T.S. Eliot, yeah. who actually oh. quotes via la la via la in the, in, in, in the, um, the, um, or the, 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 in, in, in the wasteland. In the wasteland, that's also well, also. Oh, yeah. to talk that he, he quotes such uh, Tristan also. In yes, the wasteland. Uh, um, I mean, I, th I, I think he was uh, Virginia Woolf. 
yeah. uh, who, who regularly attended uh, Wagner performances at Covent Garden. So I, I, I think there is that um, strong influence. Uh, the, I, I would say that occasionally there are maybe some of the, um, the, uh, the post-Wagnerian composers, Schreker, Zemlinsky, Korngold, there are times when you hear Wagner yeah, coming Korngold. through, Wagner coming through a little more than just sort of an influence. It's like they're like, like almost, it, you can almost hear Wagner himself for about two or three Humperdinck. minutes. Humperdinck. Yeah. Oh, Humperdinck, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think Hansel and Gretel is a wonderful piece. And it it's is. God knows it's Wagnerian. Um, yeah. though, has anyone in this room ever heard an opera of Siegfried Wagner all the way through? What have you heard? Which one? That sounds fun. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know that the Ju Juilliard, my alma mater, has, I don't know if you know that, has the only complete edition of all the operas of uh, Siegfried Wagner. All the other ones got destroyed in World War II, so. Uh, Which was? Siegfried Wagner. Yeah, because he wrote sort of, uh, sort of relatively light fairy tale yes. children's operas. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, they all sound like bad. They sound like sort of lesser uh, Humperdinck. They sound like, uh, they, it's, they sound like uh, Hansel and Gretel without the tunes. And, and that's, <laughs> it's like somebody said that uh, something, uh, uh, some work on Broadway was like uh, Parsifal without the jokes. Uh, that was what, <laughs> that was what Noel Coward said about Camelot. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, <okay. laughs> Yeah. Well. Oh, Wagner had an enormous. First thing, Proust was completely wacky about Wagner. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, Wagner's influence on Proust is um, quite several. The biggest is that um, a la recherche is organized very much light motivically. Mm -hmm. And so um, he nice. very self consciously uses the concept of motives and things that change, come back, and always with a different perspective in time. Yeah, but even little things like the telephone ringing or, or notes or all sorts on many, many different levels. Excuse me, that's my glass. And um, I think um, on a huge level. Also, some of the most absolutely beautiful and moving descriptions of Wagner's music are in, um, in, in the pages of Proust. Actually, that's true of Thomas Mann, too. I mean, you know, the, the short story Tristan, for instance, um, has, has fun. But actually, I think, um, and Wagner modeled in a very funny way, Wagner thought of... Um, Joseph and his brothers as his count as his comic counterpart to Wagner's Ring des Nibelungen, you know, this enormous four-part saga. Um, and they're it's very different. Yeah, well, God knows. <laughs> yes. Oh, I agree. It's very different. But um, it's first thing. It's comic. But yeah. I mean, um, but in a funny, funny kind of way, deep down, I think both Joyce and um, Proust are perhaps more Wagnerian, really, than than Mann is. And Mann is sort of more Goethean. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, uh. Well, Mann wrote a lot about Wagner, yeah. and he wrote probably one of the very best essays that's ever yeah. been written on Wagner, the which is the one that he lost his citizenship for and um, didn't and had to go into exile. The sufferings of Richard, 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 Richard Wagner, which is which is incredible. But I think that um, the the idea of the light motif, there would be good grounds for saying that that is the basis of Ulysses. Uh, that you know, Ulysses is basically just a walk through a city that takes place in 24 hours. And what you do is you pick up the light motifs of the city and gradually a whole sort of world of the city appears in a very, very Wagnerian way. Um, I, I would say that probably um, Joyce was the strongest writer, at least in the English language, who was influenced. The other one, of course, probably would be um, uh, Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway has got a lot of, um, um, in, in fact, it's been a time since I've read it, but I believe there are actually one or two light motifs in it that do refer to Wagner. But there is, but there is sort of um, themes that are constantly coming and uh, coming back and disappearing. And, the, and the, mean, the meaning of the work, to a certain extent, resides in you understanding what those light motifs are saying and how they relate to each other. I mean, he, there's, there's a book, was it, was it Raymond Furness who wrote a book on Wagner and literature? No, Johnny Gattani. Johnny, that's no. not as good. No. No, Raymond no, Furness. <laughs> Raymond Furness did one okay. that actually is worthwhile <laughs> looking at. Okay, I don't know that book. Um, yeah. uh, another Joycean work, which is extremely Wagnerian, uh, perhaps almost um, too abstractly Wagnerian, is Finnegan's Wake. 
I mean, I say that with regret. It's not that I don't think that good music is being written today, but I don't think that um, any, any music has the stature, influence, or power that, that, that Wagner had in its time. No. I think there have been composers since Wagner who had comparable stature and, and, and influence and power. Stravinsky, for instance, or I, the name of Schoenberg, I think, um, and, and some others too. But, but not, I'm not saying they're as great as Wagner. That's not, well, I think when it comes to the issues of opera, we just do not have audiences who are prepared to actually listen to operas that have just been written in the last few years. Uh, and, and, and furthermore, uh, one of the things, if you uh, talk to both playwrights and, uh, and, and, and opera composers, one of the things they frequently uh, complain about is that once you've written an opera or a play, you have to have the damn thing workshopped for five years before anybody feels that it's something that should actually be presented in front of an audience. Whereas Wagner and Verdi, and indeed in the 19th century, on the whole, you, 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 you wrote your work, you performed your work, and if it didn't work, then you actually sat down and you rewrote it until it did work. But um, there's a very, very different approach now to, um, uh, to performance. There's not the sort of the spontaneous sort of productivity uh, that there has been in the past. And, and as a result, uh, I, 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 it seems impossible to know how a Wagner could actually make himself felt upon the public. Um, even if he did write music that was tremendously popular. Because the other thing is, is most of the operas, I have to confess, the music is not particularly attractive. Or interesting or good. Or, or interesting or good. I mean, there's so many, so many uh, modern operas one listens to, who just say, but why didn't you write it this way instead? Why didn't you write music that I want to come back to listen to again? And that very rarely happens. Oh, then we're getting it in LA afterwards. I wish you'd stop feeding our stuff. Us our stuff. Oh, well, no, it's, it's, he, he's, he's no longer new. He's no longer with us, the composer. That was Daniel Catan. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. We have a question over here. Yeah. I'm not competent. I'm not. I'm, no, no, I'm sure it is, but I'm not competent to speak on that. I just don't know enough. What do you think of Adams as an opera? The which? John Adams. John Adams. Oh, I like his stuff. Yes. Um, that makes me honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I enjoyed um, the, the, the um, gospel recording of the other Mary. That was actually quite an interesting piece. Oh. Right. Okay. Well. Oh, no, no, Carson wanted to. I know, and people, the only thing people have done with the music itself is, is cut it, yeah. uh, which they used to do all the time. And nowadays, since the, because of rec, one of the few good things about records is that it's, it's made people used to complete performances so they no longer cut Wagner right now. But Carson yeah. wanted to, and he wanted yeah. to change the story, change the music, and change the words. And, you know, there's, there, there are a lot, there's, let me give you, there are two ways, though, which that's different. Whether or not I like that done with, with Bach. With Bach, first thing, um, probably 70 or 80 percent of his music is already a transcription of one of his own pieces or somebody else's pieces. So Bach's relationship to the score is very different than Wagner's. But also, putting on a Wagner opera takes a tremendous amount of money, a tremendous amount of energy, a tremendous amount of time with a lot of people. Playing a 10-minute Bach work Anybody can do right there. So just to invest that much time, money, energy, personnel, talent, etc., to do a, a jazz version of, 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 of Wagner, strikes me as a very dubious and, and, and rather, I would say, impossible enterprise. Whereas to do somebody decide to do a rap version of a Beethoven symphony, well, it's they can do it. I mean, I I, I don't want to hear it, but that's another story. Um, um, but the but I don't see a rap version of Tristan and Isolde. Although I, you know, you never know. <laughs> I, I think one other thing to add to that, though, is that, um, you know, if you take plays, take Shakespeare's plays, for example, they have been done in different versions. They've been cut, they've been adapted, they've been rearranged, and you can do that with a play. To do it with music is hideously difficult. 
to do it with Wagner must be incredibly difficult to, 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 to change all this around so it still forms a coherent whole. Music is really, uh, opera is almost unadaptable, whereas I think spoken drama 